dishwasher shop. This is place the movie fan. And it's time to cover the Birdman yet again. Now back in 2019, the Birdman made a video everything wrong with Cinema Sins Avengers Endgame. Now if you guys don't already know how I feel about Avengers Endgame, I think that movie is just okay. I have tried very hard for over a fucking year now. To love it as much as so many people do. But no matter how hard I try, I can't as there are a lot of things about the movie that still bother me. However, I will do my best to not let my opinion on the movie influence my points. So yeah, I wanna give my thoughts on the Birdman's video on Cinema Sins Avengers Endgame video. So, let's fucking do it. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Violet. Hawkeye's entire goddamn family gets snapped away. His wife and three children. In Ant-Man 2, more ant-ning, we saw Scott lose everyone around him when he went into the quantum realm. We saw both Fury and Maria Hill disappear, and meanwhile, Craig and his family are completely okay. You hear that, Craig? F*** you and your stupid family, Craig. Yes, you all waited seven months and two days for this. Congratulations. And it was well worth it, since it's very fucking funny. Wait, each of these sinks in this bathroom have individual shaving mirrors? Is that really necessary? It's about as necessary as pointing this out. Holy shit, man! You missed out on the perfect opportunity to debunk him. And since you didn't, I'm doing it for you. Cinema Sins, tell me, do you know what those shaving mirrors are for? That's right, fucking shaving. And it's a lot more convenient to use them to shave than the main mirror. Also, since this is a public bathroom, at the very least, for the people who work there, there is a high possibility that a lot of men could be in there at the same time. So yes, it absolutely fucking is necessary. This is gonna work, Steve. I know it will, because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Go back to the Fantastic Four? Up your ass. I must admit, how you pwned cinema sense here is fucking hilarious. Because even if this was a joke, it's still pretty insulting that he would suggest such a great actor to go back to such a shitty franchise. I mean seriously cinema sense, what the hell is wrong with you? We use the stones to destroy the stones. Weird, I used my farts to cover for other farts, but there were still farts left over, so what gives? This is what happens when you push cinema sins into a corner and they try to prove that they are a comedy channel and not a criticism channel. You get jokes like these. This is why we say that they are mainly a movie criticism channel, because when they actually try to be funny, well... Okay, I will agree with you, that joke was terrible. And it wasn't funny in the slightest. And this is coming from someone who finds most of his jokes funny. But you are still completely fucking wrong about cinema since mainly being a critiquing channel. I mean, come on, just because a joke is terrible doesn't mean that it's not a joke. So no, you didn't prove jacks yet. Most of the sins are still meant to be jokes. Once again, tele-holograms will have a normal conversation with each other like they're literally standing in a room like this, when in fact they're all by themselves, in some sort of hollow booth that I would just once like to see in operation. If they're wearing VR, we'd see it on their holograms. If they have a panoramic video screen around them that is tied to a certain channel, then where is camera? Come on, is this really something wrong with Avengers Endgame? Who the hell is sitting around going, Gee, I wonder how these holograms work. I mean, there's a talking space raccoon on the screen who not only speaks English, but does so with a Brooklyn accent. Who gives a shit about how these holograms work, and why would the movie be better for explaining it? It's completely reasonable to question how things in a fictional universe work. You know how you understand a fictional universe better? By questioning it. And for the record, CinemaSins is absolutely right. There's no explanation given on how these things work. And yes, explaining how they work would improve the quality of the movie, even though it's just slightly. Just because a problem is minor doesn't mean that it's not worth bringing up. Also, your argument that uh, other unbelievable things exist in the movie as well, therefore, it's not that unbelievable. It's fucking stupid because it totally judges the issue. The fact that other fantasy elements exist doesn't debunk his point that the movie doesn't explain how these things work. And for the record, those two things aren't comparable in the slightest. I mean, sure, it's not explained in the MCU movies how Rocket can talk, but it's easy to buy that since it makes sense in the universe of the movie. How those holograms work, not so much. So Rocket talking isn't even that unbelievable unlike the other thing. So who do we talk to about this? I'm not a f***ing quantum physicist. Look, I know Tony's brilliant. 
but this has never been his forte. If anything, Scott himself should know some more appropriate scientists through his associations with Hank. Why not see if Larry Fishburne is still alive? Except physics is precisely where Tony's expertise is concentrated. With Hank Pym, Shuri, and Spider-Man all dead, the Hulk and Iron Man are the only two geniuses they know about with the capability to handle this, and Bill Foster is on the run. All right, here's a question. How do we even know that Bill Foster wasn't vibed by the snap? I mean, he doesn't appear in the movie at all. So it's safe to assume that he was wiped out by the snap as well. And even if he wasn't, who fucking cares? In desperate situations, battered fugitives might be your best option. So if he is alive and not wiped out, we are seriously doubt. Not asking him for help is fucking stupid. Jesus, did no one watch Ant-Man 2? Well, since it made a lot of money, the box office, obviously many people fucking did. Now of course, I know that you don't mean this literally and are questioning if he even watched the fucking movie. It really amazes me that one of your most common sins is cinema sins thinks ignorance, but yet for some reason can't puzzle it together that maybe cinema sins just buy. Be ignored on purpose for the purpose of a joke. You should have realized that by now. Of all the bullshit this movie did not need, it's Hawkeye's career as a vigilante. But even more, I can't believe Hawkeye is the kind of guy who can take on a horde of Yakuza on his own. You might say Hawkeye has fought tons of enemies stronger than this, and I say with help. This is what I've been telling you forever. Hawkeye is far more badass than you have been giving him credit for. There is a reason this guy is an Avenger, and it's because he can do shit like this. Yeah, I never understood his beef with Hawkeye and Black Widow. I mean, sure, they barely did anything in the first Avengers movie, but that doesn't make them the characters. This is especially shocking science. Black Widow is one of the best characters of Captain America the Winter Soldier. So yeah, man, I'm in agreement with you. It makes absolutely no sense that he has beef with those two fucking characters. One side there, Lebowski. Hilarious reference, but this is a reference to a movie that starred Jeff Bridges, who was in the original Iron Man. Stop with the constant references, especially when they make no goddamn sense. Gah! Jeremy sends a film for doing something he does all the time, ex machina. So hold on a minute. Cinema Sense is always in the wrong for using the term ex machina. And I know you think that he is always in the wrong for that. Does he never remove a sin for when he uses the term correctly? But yet it's totally okay for you to use that term. Hey, what do you know? I found more if crash it did. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future. And your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Are we really just going to leave out the alternative timeline explanation here? Because this reason focuses on the effects of time travel on one individual. It basically says all those new timeline people can go f themselves. Except the film answers this question by showing you that nothing really happens to these other timelines when they slip into them. However, the long-term effects of time travel haven't been explored yet, and I suspect they will further answer these questions with Mordo and Doctor Strange too. And I'm looking forward to this movie for sure. Guys, I've got it. Since we lost the wonderful Stan Lee, let's just cast Mark Maron to stand in for his cameos in future MCU movies. Look at him. It's perfect. Jeremy says all this and treats it as a sin of this movie. How is this a sin, you might ask? Who the fuck knows? Okay, this is something that has disgusted me ever since I saw it in the original video by CinemaSense. Suggesting that anyone should replace Stan Lee when it comes to his cameos is beyond tasteless. And I was hoping you would call him out for that. But as you didn't, I'm giving you trillion sins for that. Also, why is the word fuck censored in the text? But it's not censored when you're actually talking. That's a big inconsistency. But more on that later. With the stones you've collected for me, create a new one, teeming with life knows not what it is lost but only what it has been given so with the stones he could have literally done anything he wanted and he chose option z cut the population of the universe in half what a dick i was on board with thanos the thoughtful madness because it made a certain sense for a villain to exercise a cruel intelligence on life in his quest for balance but now that we know he could create a whole universe that whole balance thing that he once espoused and i believed in no longer works he could have created two earths connected by an accordion tunnel and told astrophysics to go 
itself while half the population moved to the literal new world. Source material doesn't matter in the CinemaSins universe, but the word on the street is that the comic book Thanos did all this to impress a lady named Death. That's right, the power of boners made Thanos do this, and his actions make way more sense under that context than this does. The thing that you have to understand is that this is a different Thanos. He has learned from the mistakes of his future self, and he realized that people will attempt to change what he does. The previous Thanos thought everyone would be grateful. His new plan is to create a new universe that doesn't know about him killing half of them. That way, no one will try to undo his actions. But can this be argued? That this was just 18 Thanos knew that people would try to undo his actions? I mean, think about it. Why else did he destroy the stones and make them into dust? Avengers! Assemble. Yes! Although, this means we're gonna get a stupid jumble of effects driven bullshit fan service for the next several minutes before there are actual stakes involved, aren't we? What kind of horrific, slack jawed, bird brain pig nipple would send this amazing scene? Them's fighting sins. Alright, there is one thing I don't understand. And that's when you give cinema sins a sin for sending a great scene. But first of all, whether a scene is good or bad is also objective. But that's not what I want to focus on. Instead, I want to focus on talking about something else. Are you saying that a great scene in a movie can't be criticized? It sure as hell seems that way to me. So you constantly give cinema scenes a sin for daring to critique a scene which you think is great. Now look, no matter how great a movie is, there are always going to be fluffs and a movie deserves to be critiqued for it. And that also just apply to movies as a whole. Even the best scenes in movies can have flaws with them that need to be pointed out. Come on, of all the scenes in the Marvel movies that don't make the power differential clear between two opponents, it's this one. Captain Marvel is world stronger than Thanos. And Thanos has taken a beating so far. In what universe is Captain Marvel worlds stronger than fucking Thanos? Did you not just see him sling her like a ragdoll? If she were worlds stronger, she'd have wrestled the gauntlet away, and she had her hands on it twice. It also took both her hands to keep his one hand from closing. Yeah, 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 headbutt. But Thanos had been fighting Thor, Iron Man, Captain America with Mjolnir, and Scarlet Witch, and had taken significant damage in this battle, and is still holding his own. This is just two powerful characters going back and forth. I don't see the issue here. Yeah! I don't understand why cinema scenes is such a fan boy of Captain Marvel. Now I fucking love the movie Captain Marvel, but I acknowledge that Captain Marvel isn't a perfect goddess that can do no wrong, which is what cinema scenes seems to think. Which is exactly why calling her a Mary Sue is fucking bullshit by the way. And I'd be the first one in line to defend Captain Marvel as I think the hate that we've got is unwarranted. But yes, yeah, cinema scenes fan poison towards Captain Marvel. It's pretty fucking pathetic. Also, I've asked this question many times and I'm gonna ask it again. So I haven't gotten an answer yet. What exactly are your standards when it comes to censoring the word fuck? Sometimes you censor it and sometimes you do not. Seriously, what are your standards? I really would like to fucking know. Because it's very inconsistent that sometimes you censor the word and sometimes you don't. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. I enjoyed this video. I have nothing else to say in my final thoughts. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Thank you all for watching and you all have a fantastic day.